So I've been wanting to start a new style of video for a while, a more chill, laid back one where I don't really write the script or really produce it all that much. I don't really plan to do that much editing, but yeah. It's a lot <laughs> and no, no, mo no matter how much I've been trying to keep a good rhythm going and keep up with the writing and stuff, the ideas they're there but they just don't want to come out. I, it feels forced or like something has to change, something isn't working. I don't know. I've gone through moments in my life where I've been really disciplined, I feel like, or at least really driven and motivated to want to work. Um, but then it somehow always seems to default to the state of lack of inspiration and feeling like I'm just dragging myself along and pushing myself to do the things because as you guys have probably heard, you have to be disciplined. You can't rely on dis on motivation. And that's what I keep telling myself that I just have to keep going and keep up with the grind. But then it comes to a point where I ask myself, when do I get what to do what I want to do, what I actually want to do? When does life get to feel good? Especially since I have the spiritual side of me and I try to look at the or find a deeper meaning in life and maybe a deeper purpose that I know we don't really need a purpose. There's not really a purpose for life, but I feel like it does help a lot to, to find one for yourself and pursue it. So at least for me, I feel like the meaning of life is to just be joyful and to play and to be led by your curiosity, like I've talked in a lot of my videos. And to just create and experience life, learn lessons, but not to seek out suffering, just to grow. I mean, that all is nice, but it comes it comes bundled in with the with the package, you know, you don't have to seek it out yourself. And I feel like by being so disciplined and strict with myself and rigid, I kind of create that environment of suffering for myself. So it's like I've yet to find this balance between play and being led by intuition and cute curiosity and just a desire to create versus being led by my routines and a schedule and all these external expectations to post every two weeks which is something I I imposed on myself it's something I imposed on myself but I feel like yeah, I mean, we're constantly told this, and I think it is true that in order to grow, you have to do things consistently, whether that be YouTube, whether that be exercising, whether that be eating healthily. But damn, it just gets tiring after a while. <laughs> yeah, where's that balance where, yeah, where well, you're still consistent, but you still have that flexibility to flow with life and respond to life. And if there's a cool event happening, you can put your work down and go to that event and be there fully and, you know, live it fully, be in the moment, be present, and then come back to work. And maybe because you went to that event, you now have new ideas and a fresh perspective and renewed energy to keep on creating. But I feel like too often work wins out. Too often we give the priority to work and so we let all these other side, other things fall to the wayside. Uh, like hanging out with friends or doing things that really call our attention either because 
uh, we don't let ourselves do it either because of a lack of money or a lack of time, quote unquote. But then again, I feel like in life, if you don't make the time for something, then you'll never have time for it. Or at least it'll seem that way. So, I don't know. It's like I've made this these videos before about talking about how you have to sacrifice your comfort now in order to be able to indulge in it fully later in life. But it's like... I don't know. I don't want to front load all the enjoyment of life. It's that same dilemma of having a 9 to 5 and then biding your time until you can retire. And then once you're retired, you have hopefully all this money saved up, but now you no longer have the energy, you no longer have possibly the friends that you used to. So... I don't know. What's the answer? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah, and this is my first step towards doing that. To break up the routine a little bit while still being or feeling like I'm productive or feeling like it's a step along the way of my YouTube career. But not... I mean, that's literally why I named this channel Unbound Creation because I wanted to there to be no limitations to my creativity. Uh, I didn't want to be bound by boxes and labels and a routine and a certain structure. But since that's what everyone else is doing, it kind of just seems like the default. It's like what I always slip back to is discipline and, and schedules. Even though I know for me it doesn't feel good, at least not in a long enough time span. You know, after, yeah, I could do it for like a month or two, but the third month, fourth month, uh, it's, it starts feeling a little... I start feeling a little stagnant and it starts feeling a little uninspired. Limiting, like I was saying. So yeah, I don't know. Do you guys think that there's some sort of balance between being led by your intuition and your creativity and joy and play and all the fun things, all the things we actually want to be doing and feeling versus being led by discipline and schedules and rigidity? I mean, I know it also depends on personality. Some people thrive on... On schedules and they love that sort of life but it's not for me and it's not for everyone I don't think so yeah if you're not the type of person that thrives off of scheduling and planning and all of that type of stuff how do you approach productivity and getting stuff done um, because I feel like while I've only spoken positively about being led by play and curiosity and joy and all that stuff, I feel like if you're led too much by it, then you do possibly, I don't know, because I've never actually given my ch myself a chance to do this, but I feel like there is a chance that you'll just be directionless, maybe. Uh, or that you'll try a bunch of stuff, start a bunch of stuff, and never actually finish any of it, uh, or that it won't lead anywhere. But then my spiritual side is like, no, your intuition and your desires and your joy, it, they're all guides for what you're actually supposed to be doing. But I don't know. Yeah, there's that spiritual side of me, and then there's that side of me that listens more to society and is more plugged in to the conventional wisdom and that side of me is like you won't achieve anything if you just are led by your desires anymore that's a gluttonous style that's hedonistic that's almost like a lazy way out you can't have fun in life you have to put your head down and work 
work, work, work <laughs> until you die. Uh, but I don't know. Life really doesn't seem fulfilling if that's the answer. The second, the second part. And then I also think about how, yeah, there's no law written in the sky saying that we have to work or that we have to be disciplined and productive and always go after more and more and more and more and more uh, and never be satisfied with what we have and never live in the present moment. That is all stuff that society tells us and society was completely human created and I think that's part of the reason why I find it so unfulfilling because a part of me knows that it's fake a part of me knows that it's just completely artificial and it's just the rules that a really small percent of people want us to follow for their benefit and It's almost like that small percent of people could be a representation of the worst parts of the ego because it's the ego that always wants us to be working and do, being productive and not be present and to always be led by fear and our insecurities and to be kept small and limited uh, and to have a logical order to everything and yeah, for there to be order and structure and all that, I feel like this small percent of people, the one person, has just taken that to the to the most extreme. That's why they're chasing, they're constantly chasing money, power, control, influence, all things that are very much ego-based. And then because they've been able to gain all this power and control and influence, because the intuition is more feminine and therefore a little more able to be subordinated though that's not at all to say that it doesn't have extreme power in its own right but it is more flexible more willing to to yield and yeah so because these people have taken the side of the ego to the extreme, the masculine, the logical, they've been able to then kind of capture our attentions, capture our time, our energy, literally our lives, and exploit them for their benefit. But just because that's the predominant way of doing things doesn't mean it's the right thing. It doesn't mean it's the last or that is the best way. Not by any means. Either this is always something I think about is that just because you're in the limelight or just because you're more visible or more outspoken or you have more of a platform than someone else doesn't mean that you're any better than them. It just means that you're exactly those things. You're more visible, you're more outspoken, you're louder, you're stronger, you're whatever. But the only difference there is not that one is better than the other. It's just that one had a desire to be in the limelight and to be heard and all of that stuff a lot more than the other person who was who was, be, who was satisfied just living life and they're more fulfilled by that. They don't have that insecurity that, and I'm not saying that everyone who's outspoken and visible, etc., is insecure, but a lot of people, I do think that is their driving, their driving force. And especially speaking about the 1% who want power and influence and control, I feel like a lot of what got them to that point um, a lot of the reason why they woke up in the morning and got to work and you know did whatever it is they had to do to get to the top whether honest or dishonest whether moral or immoral whether following their values or not 
they did all that thing all those things because they were probably led by fear and so yes like I've said in all in my videos ego does lead to results it does it can be very effective in getting you to the top because that's exactly what the ego wants it's for you to always be on top it's for you to always be better faster stronger smarter whatever while intuition and the feminine and the spirit is is not it's complete it doesn't need to chase all these external metrics to to feel fulfilled and full and satisfied it it's already satisfied with what is with what's given to us which is the present which is literally it it's a good name for it because it really is a gift and so yeah the point is that i feel like as a society we're just being driven by the most outspoken the most the pe the most visible the most opinionated the most polarizing people i mean you see it all the time this is how cults gain a following this is how political leaders uh gain all their power is by dividing the people by polarizing the people by being really opinionated and then we have to choose sides and majority wins but just because it's majority again doesn't mean that it's the best way forward and so a lot of us myself included if i don't stop and think about it long enough have this bias of thinking that just because it's already been established just because that's the way that things have been been being done for a while just because this is the way the most successful people do it this is just because this is the way society has been carried out for so long then that's the way that's the right way and that's the way it must continue being but if that were the case then i really don't think that mental health would be in such a crisis right now that so many people would be feeling lonely and purposeless and feeling like life doesn't have a meaning or at least that the meaning that has been supplied to us by the 1% isn't fulfilling truly fulfilling to most of us probably any of us if we're really honest with ourselves yeah i really don't think we were put on this earth to work to just like toil away tirelessly and never be satisfied i i, I that's that's what i keep coming back to is that intuition and spirit is satisfied with what is it doesn't need anything more which doesn't mean that you can't grow it doesn't mean that you can't do things it doesn't mean that just because you're led by your intuition and your spirit you're always going to be slothful and and complacent not at all because by nature life is creative it wants to do things it wants to expand and contract it wants to be dynamic life is dynamic it, we can't just stay stagnant that stagnation is death that's what i always come back to and so no being being led by our intuition doesn't mean that we'll be stagnant because that would equate to death it means that we would create and do things not out of a sense of fear or emptiness or escapism or duty or obligation or because that's just the way things are done but we would do them because we actually feel called to do them we feel inspired to do them we find meaning and purpose in doing them uh it's a entirely different way of seeing and doing things and i think it would be just as effective sure we may not advance as much technologically or as a society 
But really, do we need to advance much more technologically outside of the first world countries, I mean? And yes, second and third world countries, of course, have a right to continue expanding and developing if they so choose, which is probably the best thing because that means an increased quality of life. But when... When is it enough, you know? Do we really need another model of an iPhone? Do we really need an, an even faster car than the ones we already have? That's my point, is that if we keep being led by the ego, then we'll just keep doing these same old things that won't necessarily lead anywhere. Uh, and if they do, it's much... It's pro it's very likely that it won't be the best results because we never stopped to really think and reflect if the path we had chosen uh, was really the right path, right one to begin with. It's like it's like being put in a room with three different doors. There's probably endless doors, but let's just say three. Having a gun pointed to your head and saying, decide right now which door you're going to choose. And as soon as you choose it, you can't go back. That's the way it's always going to be. And blah, blah, blah. So if you think about it, if you're under pressure, if you're under stress, if you're in a state of fear, then you're probably not going to make the right choice. Right? You're not going to make the best choice that you could have. So let's say you chose door two. And door two... Door two is all of the decisions we've made as a society so far. And because we're in a state of stress and fear, anxiety, etc., etc., and because the rules of the game are that we can't stop enough to allow ourselves to think about whether this is really the right decision or not, because we have to keep working, we have to keep up with our duties, we have to put food on the table, we have to take care of our children, we have to, etc., etc., take care of our pets, what have you, all of the daily responsibilities that keep us trapped and with blinders on, basically. Since we're never allowed the time to think and really let ourselves feel how we're really feeling and question, that's an important one is question, then we don't have any hope of reversing or undoing what's already been done. So yeah, that's how I think about it on a like on a macro scale, on a large scale. But I still don't really know how to act against it because as as pain, as painful as it may be and as as much as I may be against it I feel like we really we do in a way to a certain extent have to follow the rules of society just because we're born into society, we're conditioned by society. Society is like this constant, ever-present presence and it continually pressures us to keep in line and keep doing things the way they've always been done. And so, and also as humans, we're We're very social creatures and we rely on our tribes, quote unquote, which currently our tribe, we can say, is society. It's the city we live in. It's the neighborhood we live in. It's our neighbors. So if everyone else is doing this, number one, we're much more likely to want to mirror everyone around us than to do something differently because to do something different means that you're an outlier it means that you're uh you're an outsider and outsiders don't survive outsiders are the first ones 
to die off because they're not nurtured or taken taken care of by the rest of the tribe or in our case the society so if we do things differently then our families might shun us our friends might reject us society will look at us weird so to a certain extent just for basic survival i do think that it is necessary to fall I hate the word fall in line, but to do things the way that they're conventionally done and to try to follow the rules and, you know, earn money so that you can pay for basic things, etc., etc. So there's that social aspect, but then there's also just literal, like, pure survival, um, survivorship it is because. If you don't make money, like I just said, then you won't have the resources to meet your basic needs. You won't have money to pay for food or pay for shelter or have a car, which in modern day society is oftentimes a necessity. So I don't know how to be like on the on the fringes of society where I can guarantee my survival, but be outside of it enough to really live the sort of life that I want or live life as I see fit and not be driven by all these kind of arbitrary rules or worse maybe not even arbitrary but like purposely put in place to like I said before keep us small and obedient and subordinates and so on subordinated so yeah, I'm figuring that out. In a way, I think YouTube is really good at that because though of course you can impose all this external structure and rules and conventions and etc. like having a consistent schedule and having a niche that you just keep yourself within and having a certain style and a brand uh, so on and so forth there are definitely ways that you can limit and construct yourself within the realm of youtube while that's true it's also very much encouraging of flexibility and creativity and just talking about things that really interest you and building a crowd building an audience a community hopefully around that and finding liberation in that way uh, it's also really flexible in other ways like it's location independent so YouTube is a really good way of doing that and that's why that's part of the reason why I'm so interested in in YouTube and so invested because I really do see see it as part of my escape plan, if you will. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really do see it as a way where you can earn money doing what you really want, wherever you want to live. And it doesn't really have to affect any part of your life outside of YouTube. Like, I mean, you can live on a farm if you wanted to. You can live in a different country, whatever. But yeah, I think in, in that way, I am really grateful for social media and the internet and technolo technology and all that stuff because it is decentralizing basically everything. It, it's removing that need to depend on an employer and for the employer, therefore, to rule your entire life. Like if you have to, if they tell you you have to work on Saturday, then you have to cancel all your plans. And ba basically, you're a slave, a wage slave to them. So I think technology is amazing for that. So yeah, this video <laughs> kind of took you a lot of places, but all of that has been on my mind and I would be really interested in knowing what you guys thought if you guys feel similarly at all if you see some sort of solution where we can start changing society a little bit and 
so that it could start fitting our needs more and actually satisfying and meeting our psychological and physiological, etc., all of our desires and needs. Instead of just doing things because that's the way they've always been done. Uh, I'm not satisfied with that answer. And I'm sure all of you, I would say all of you, probably none of you are satisfied with that answer. It's like, it's like when we were kids and our parents just told us to do things because they said so. Because they were the authority and we didn't have any room to question the rules or the norms or or anything because our opinion wasn't valued that's basically what society and the one percent is doing to us it's telling us these are the rules this is how it's done do it don't question it sell your life basically to us and which is like a once <laughs> no pun intended, but a once in a lifetime opportunity is to be here on this, on this planet as a human, to learn, to grow, to explore, to create, to play, etc. And we're just giving all that up and saying, saying yes to the 1%, saying yes to the masters, if you will. And I think Though that's been the norm for so long, it, I don't, I can't imagine that it'll continue much, much longer. Like, yes, maybe on a 50-year horizon, sure. But I think we're already seeing it slowly break down. People are more and more unsatisfied. And another great thing about internet and technology is that now we don't, we don't have to remain isolated and feel like we're the only ones with this opinion because one, the internet connects all of us and what one person thinks in one part of the country or one part of the world, they can voice it and people around the world can read it, can see it, can listen to it and resonate with it and reply back oh yeah i also feel like that and in that way we can build a real sense of community and you know there's strength in numbers so i feel like just that is going to be slowly chiseling away at the power structures that be <laughs> but also another really important component of that is that we can do so anonymous anonymously so we no longer have this fear of like outing ourselves or like showing ourselves to be this weird person or someone who thinks differently, um, someone who's an outlier. We can do so anonymously and receive the support and feel like we're not alone. So yeah, anyways, <laughs> I've tried to end this video for a couple times now, so I'm actually gonna do it now. But yeah, let me know what you guys think if you feel similarly. I really, really am curious about what you guys think. Do you think we're gonna find a way out of this anytime soon? Do you think there's a way out of it? Is there a better way? Um, yeah, let me know in the comments below. And I actually really enjoyed this sort of video. I thought I wasn't going to have anything to say, but clearly that wasn't the case. <laughs> so, yeah. I plan on doing it more often now and see what it leads to. So, see you guys. Also, this doesn't affect my regular, regular posting schedule. I will be posting a video every two weeks like I've been doing these are just in addition to that and I'm not going to put I'm not I'm not going to put any sort of strict structure or schedule on these sort of videos where it's just more talk to the camera because like with everything I just talked about I don't want everything in my life to be structured and rigid I want some things to be a place of just pure creativity and just a pure outlet where 
I can do it if I want to or not. And with it, where there's not any sort of expectations where I can talk about anything that's on my mind that's weighing heavily on my heart. And that's how I want to keep these sort of videos. So yes, they're an add-on, they're an extra, but also no expectations. There won't be any sort of regular regularity to them necessarily unless that's what I feel called to do in that space of time but that's subject to change at any moment so yeah thank you guys again so much for watching and I'll see you for my next videos mm.